Hey everyone. One of the most common questions we get on the Shapeoko forums and Facebook group is, now that I've bought my CNC, what else do I need to buy? So in this video, I'm going to discuss what I feel are the basic necessities, as well as a few helpful upgrades if you've just bought or are planning to purchase a hobby level CNC. I'll be focusing on the Shapeoko 3 as that's the machine I have, but a lot of this advice will be relevant for any hobby level CNC. I'll be leaving links to many of the items in the description below. If you decide to purchase any of the items I recommend using the Amazon links, it will help out the channel a bit, but none of the items mentioned here were sponsored in any way. They're all items I've purchased with my own money during my learning process using my Shapeoko 3. Before we begin, I'd like to mention a few assumptions I'll be making. I'll assume you're new to CNC milling and may be unfamiliar with various terms involved. I'll assume you're primarily looking to work in softer materials like wood and plastic, and not so much in metals. I'll assume you want to be able to make a variety of projects that include various types of tooling operations including profile and v-carving cuts. And finally, I'll assume you hope to use your machine not just to make items for yourself but also for sale online or locally. If the most common question is what should I buy with my CNC? The most common form of that question is what end mills and bits should I purchase? If you look online, you'll find a variety of starter packs that include a multitude of bits but can cost hundreds of dollars. In my opinion, new CNC users can get by with just three bits, a 1 quarter inch square end mill, a 1 eighth inch square end mill, and a 60 degree V carving bit. If you've purchased the Shapeoko 3, your machine will most likely come with one of these a one quarter inch square end mill. The quarter inch refers to the cutter diameter, and the square means that the end of the bit is flat and perpendicular to the shank. Quarter inch bits are quite sturdy. There's a lot of metal there to resist bending and breaking, and they can be run fairly aggressively through most material. Material a quarter inch or less can often be cut in a single pass, especially with softer woods, MDF, and plywoods. If you're planning on making larger items, such as monogram door hangers, you may find you almost exclusively use this size bit. The quarter inch bit you receive with your Shapeoko 3 should last you a long time and make a lot of cuts. When it does come time to replace it, consider ordering a replacement from Carbide 3D directly or looking on Amazon from brands like Whiteside, Kodiak, and Yonico. In addition to quarter inch end mills, I recommend having eighth inch end mills on hand. The smaller cutting diameter allows you to get into much tighter spaces, especially on intricate designs. Because the smaller cutting diameter will take much longer to cut large areas, the eighth inch end mill will not fully replace your quarter inch end mill and are much more useful for smaller jobs or where a lot of detail is needed. One consideration when buying smaller cutters is the shank diameter. In this case, these bits have not only a 1 8 inch cutting head, but also a 1 8 inch shank. This means that they will not fit in the quarter inch collets that tend to come with most trim routers, including the DeWalt 611. For these bits to work, you'll need to also purchase a 1 8 inch collet. There are several third party 8 inch collets available, including one from Carbide 3D themselves, which can be purchased with your CNC, as well as the Elair brand collet. Both are extremely high quality and either will work fine. Both the quarter inch and eighth inch end mills are straight cutting, and the cut will always be perpendicular to the work surface. By contrast, a V carving bit, or V bit, cuts a groove into the wood by varying the depth of the cut according to the width of the desired groove. Unlike a straight cutting bit, which is typically defined by the diameter of its cutter, a V carving bit is defined by the angle of its cutter. A steeper angle indicated by a lower angle will cut deeper into the wood for the same width, whereas a larger angled bit can make the same cut without cutting as deeply into the wood. If the primary reason you purchased your CNC was for sign making, you may want to start off with a 30, 60, and 90 degree bit, as this will cover most of your work. But for general purpose users, I recommend just starting with a 60 degree bit. Once you're comfortable using the 60 degree bit, you'll better understand how using a different angled end mill can affect the appearance of your work. Just as with any power tool, your CNC requires certain safety precautions to be taken anytime you use the machine. 
Whenever I operate my machine, I wear both eye and hearing protection. Safety glasses are extremely affordable, and I recommend buying several sets to have around your shop so that one is always at hand. I own two sets of ear protection. One is a simple set of noise-reducing earmuffs. While these are very effective, I much prefer my 3M work tunes. These connect to my cell phone or tablet through Bluetooth and allow me to listen to music or podcasts or other media while I work. Protection is important for cleanliness, but also health. Many woods contain known allergens, and it's not unheard of for woodworkers to develop allergies after years of exposure. There are two components to a dust collection system, the collection system itself and the mechanism to collect the dust at the source. A simple way to begin your dust collection system is with a small shop vac. While you can use a larger dedicated unit, these small shop vacs are perfect for a new setup. The small size makes it easy to carry around and to store. I also appreciate that this small unit doesn't use bags, which means I don't have to worry about keeping them on hand. I simply need to periodically empty it and wipe out the interior tank. Even without any other accessories, you can use the shop vac hose to clean up after a cut or to carefully catch some of the dust during the cut, making sure to keep the end of the vacuum hose and your hands well away from the cutter. One item I do strongly recommend having for your CNC is a dust shoe. A dust shoe attaches either to your router or to the CNC machine itself, typically surrounding the bit as it cuts. The hose from your shop vac can then be attached to the shoe which provides excellent at-the-source dust collection. Likely the most popular dust shoe attachment is the Sucket Dust Boot. This retails for around $95 as of fall 2018, so it's not a cheap purchase, but it is very effective. I've made several purchases from the company that makes this, and I've always been happy with the quality of the product. Overall, the design of this dust shoe is very mature and easy to install in any size shape Oko, allows you to add and remove the shoe as needed, including for changing bits, and allows for Z-axis independence, meaning the shoe stays at the same height even as your router moves up and down. There are many other options for both purchasing and creating your own dust shoe, so even if you decide the Sucket dust boot isn't the right one for you, strongly consider getting and setting up one of those other options. Finally, I'll talk about some small tools that while not strictly necessary for running your CNC, I found very useful. The first and most useful in my opinion is a set of digital calipers. While there are expensive versions on the market, the set I got for under $20 works great for me. These allow you to take very precise measurements reliably and repeatedly. Where I find I use these the most is measuring stock thickness. One thing you'll realize quickly is sheet goods and lumber are not sold in exact dimensions. A quarter inch thick piece of plywood is almost certainly not a quarter inch thick, and lumber and most other materials are sold the same way. Different boards in the same pile can be different and even different parts of the same board can have different thicknesses. So being able to measure accurately will save you a lot of headache. These can also be useful when making very precise parts, especially parts that need to fit together. Bits can also be off the same way lumber can. An eighth inch bit may be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, and even a cheap set of calipers can help catch that so you can correct it in your tool paths. I like to have several squares that I trust in my shop. They're useful for marking wood and for checking square. You can find squares online for under $10 as well as over 100. Personally, my favorite these days are these from eye gauging. I've seen people test these alongside heirloom grade Starrett squares and find similar precision in these. And at half to a third of the price, these are a great deal. If you do traditional woodworking or expect to do so in the future, I recommend getting these eye gauging squares. If you're not ready to invest that much in a square, this $15 one will serve you perfectly well. While a square of any style will work, I do recommend sticking to metal machinist squares or combination squares, and avoid those plastic triangles you find at home centers. Something often overlooked is lighting. Make sure you have plenty of light available around the machine. 
In my shop, I have my CNC underneath some shop cabinets I built, which gave me a place to mount some of these inexpensive LED strips. Having a quality flashlight on hand is also useful in case you find yourself wanting to inspect some of the deeper recesses of the machine. Finally, there's a whole lot of really small items that are just useful to have in your shop. I like having several mechanical pencils on hand. I frequently want to mark the center of a board if I'm using the center as my reference point, or I'll mark somewhere on my wasteboard so I can place boards in roughly the same place for subsequent cuts. I usually keep a few cheaper ones around for general use, and a single fine point pencil for any time I need a thinner, more precise line. A metal ruler is useful, one with a backing to prevent it from sliding. Most of the time, a standard 12-inch ruler is fine, but I like to keep an 18-inch on hand as well for larger boards. Unexpectedly, I found a use for these small pry tools as well. I originally purchased them to pull prints off of my 3D printer, but I find it's incredibly useful for reaching underneath a board if it's held down with double-sided tape. It easily fits under, and loosening just a corner of the piece usually is enough to lift it off. Speaking of double-sided tape, there are a lot of approaches to work holding, and they all work well. Clamps are the most secure, and are typically coupled with threaded inserts or T-track, but since the scope of this video is on what you need to get started, I recommend double-sided tape. I've tried quite a few brands and my favorite by far is this Peachtree 3 quarter inch Turner's tape. For me, this provides the correct amount of holding power while still being easy to remove. I typically place a strip along the workpiece with an inch to an inch and a half between the strips, and I've almost never had a piece come loose during cutting. And probably the small item I use the most around the shop, blue painter's tape. I've used it with glue as an alternative work holding solution. I've used it to keep wires bundled together and out of the way. I've used it to mark a board that I didn't want to write on by placing a piece of tape over where I needed to write first. In sign making, you can use it to create a paint mask by covering the entire board and then carving through it. It's an extremely useful material. It's super cheap and you can purchase it anywhere. So that's it for my recommended beginner CNC purchases. If you enjoy using your CNC, you'll almost certainly add a lot more to your collection. I think the most valuable resource to any home or hobbyist CNCer is the communities built around the machines. If you're a Shapeoko user, make sure to join us on the Carbide 3D forums or in the unofficial Shapeoko group on Facebook. There's a lot of helpful and knowledgeable people there eager to help you get your machines up and running and overcoming whatever obstacles you might have. If you've enjoyed this video or found it useful, make sure to like the video and consider subscribing. I'll leave you with two questions that I'm hoping people will answer in the comments. One, of course, is is there anything I missed? Something essential for a new Shapeoko or hobbyist level CNC user. But the second question is, is there anything you bought that you wish you hadn't? Anything you feel you wasted money on or bought unnecessarily too early in your exploration of the hobby? Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.